Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Talk About Sleep, the channel where we talk about sleep. As I always say, these videos are for educational purposes only, so you got to talk to your provider if you want to discuss any of these things in detail. That being said, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I will answer them all, usually uh, in a monthly video, okay, once a month. But I, I uh, make videos every Wednesday and Friday, so if you click uh, subscribe, you will get notifications when I when I uh, release those videos. So please click like, please uh, subscribe to the channel, please share this with anybody who may who may benefit. Okay, so in these series of I am tired videos, the next one down the line is something called idiopathic hypersomnia. Now what the hell is that, right? Anytime you hear the word idiopathic in medicine, it means we don't know why, okay, which is not something that patients like to hear, but unfortunately in this case, it's, it's true. So sleepiness, i.e. hypersomnia, okay, it's different than fatigue. And if you watch my previous videos, you'll know that fatigue is, I'm not necessarily going to fall asleep, I just don't have the energy to do what I wanna do. Whereas sleepiness is, I am actually going to fall asleep, okay? Whether it be uh, drowsy while sitting in traffic or in the middle of the day, close my office, fall asleep, or be in class or a meeting, falling asleep, okay? That's sleepiness, and that's much different than fatigue, okay? Now, there are many reasons why somebody could be sleepy. Well, not many, but there are well-defined reasons why somebody may be sleepy. Obstructive sleep apnea, if somebody's sleep-deprived, if somebody has narcolepsy, which is the last video I made, okay? Or if somebody has this condition, idiopathic hypersomnia. Fatigue, on the other hand, has many reasons as to why that is, and I ask you to uh, to watch that previous video uh, to, to get more information about that, okay? Now, idiopathic hypersomnia means we that we've ruled out sleep apnea, we've ruled out narcolepsy, we've ruled out sleep deprivation, and we're left with this condition where people are just not able to feel like the sleep that they're getting is helpful, okay? So the way we test somebody for a sleep disorder is we have them come in for an overnight sleep test, okay? We do home tests a lot too, but if we're looking at uh, uh, narcolepsy, for example, we have somebody come in for an overnight sleep test, and we're looking to see there, okay, do they have sleep apnea? Do they have any um, oxygen problems when they're breathing? Do, is their heart rhythm abnormal? Are they kicking their legs throughout the night? These are all things that we get from an overnight sleep test what stage of sleep their brain goes into, how deeply they, they sleep, how long they stay in deeper, deeper stages of sleep, okay? This is all the information that's garnered from an in-lab test. Now, when we're evaluating for somebody for narcolepsy, we have them do that. Let's say they get to the, uh, to the uh, clinic at 10 p.m. We have them sleep as best as they can until around 7 a.m., right? At 7 a.m., we wake them up, and then instead of them going home, like somebody who has sleep apnea, right? We have them come in for an overnight test. They go from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. They wake up, they shower up, they go home, okay? Somebody with narcolepsy, we wake them up at 7 a.m., but instead of them going home, what we have them do is we hang, they hang out for like an hour and a half, two hours. Around 9 a.m., we have them take a 20-minute nap period. Now, when they, if they fall asleep, that's fine. If they don't fall asleep, that's also fine. 20 minutes is up. If they've fallen asleep, whatever, we wake them up, hour and a half, two hours later, boom, another 20 minute nap period. Okay, and we do that four or five times over the course of the next day. So in our lab, we do Friday night into Saturday or Saturday night into Sunday, okay? And what we're looking to see is, as I said, the overnight test, see what we got there. But the next day, we're looking to see objectively now how tired somebody is. Somebody who has narcolepsy, they're gonna fall asleep very quickly. So their sleep latency across those naps is gonna be very, very short. On top of that though, their brain is gonna go into REM sleep. Okay, I've done videos on REM sleep, so you can check those out. Normally what happens is it takes our brain about 90 minutes after we've fallen asleep, on average, to go into REM sleep. Okay, so during a 20 minute nap period, that should not happen. Somebody with narcolepsy, it's kind of a disorder of REM sleep, and REM sleep happens in periods where it shouldn't, okay? So somebody who does this test that we're talking about, 
they're going to go into REM sleep very, very quickly. Okay. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about idiopathic hypersomnia. So why am I telling you this? Well, the evaluation for IH, that's here to four, what I'm going to be calling it, uh, the evaluation for IH is very similar to what we do with narcolepsy, which is we have people come in for an overnight sleep test. We have them do this next day nap test. Okay, and what we're looking to see is, again, how they sleep the night before, but also on that nap test, what you're going to find is their sleep latency is very short. So they're going to sleep. They're falling asleep across those naps very, very quickly, but their brain does not go into REM sleep. Okay, so this is not narcolepsy because narcolepsy, like I said, it, these people are going into REM sleep too quickly. So we're left with this condition where people are sleeping great the night before. They're very, very tired the next day, but it's not narcolepsy. So the term we use is idiopathic. Again, we don't know why. Hypersomnia. Now, where does this come from? There may be 10 or 20 different reasons as to why that is. Some people think that there's a neurotransmitter issue in the brain. Um, for example, the GABA system, okay? But nobody really knows for sure. I think in the future we will have a, a better understanding of this, and there probably will be, you know, uh, it may be narcolepsy variant or it may be its own new name, okay? But in the future it'll probably not be idiopathic because we'll have a better understanding of it. And there be maybe very diff there may be several different types or several different variants of why people have this, okay? But we're not really sure, okay? So what happens is, if somebody has narcolepsy, they are very, very tired, but they also kind of have disrupted sleep. Somebody who has idiopathic hypersomnia, these are champion sleepers. So they'll sleep 12 hours at a clip and not wake up once, right? Whereas narcolepsy patients, they'll tell you, yeah, I'm tired, but I don't sleep great at nighttime, okay? It's kind of like a a paradoxical thing there. You would think that, oh, these are champion sleepers, but they're not. People with IH are, and these are people who are sleeping 10 hours at a time, nine hours at a time straight and not feeling refreshed, okay? So despite all the things we don't know about IH, we do have treatments for them. Now, there's really only one FDA-approved medication for IH, and that's this new medication which came out called Zywave. And I'll make other videos on how we treat this, but I just for now want you to know what it is, okay? Sadly for IH, all we can do is symptomatic treatment. So we can give people medication to wake them up, to stimulate them, to get them through the day, but it's not a medication that I can say, here, take this and everything will go away. It's unfortunate, but I, again, I think in time, we hopefully we'll have an an, a better answer as to why that why that's happening. and perhaps have a disease modifying therapy, but for now we don't, all right? So that's IH in a nutshell. Again, I'll make another video on how to treat it because that, that can be a whole other discussion, but that's essentially what it is and that's the difference between narcolepsy and IH and fatigue and IH, okay? So again, this is part of a I Am Tired series of videos and, um, and if this, uh, this generates questions, please ask them in the comment section below, okay? And please subscribe, and my book, if you're so inclined, is on Amazon. And until next time, everybody, sleep well.